What's up, pod pals? Is your print-on-demand business as organized as it could be? If not, it's time to join the free Pod Foundations Challenge from September 17th to 19th. You'll get exclusive access to the same spreadsheets I use to manage my designs, my SKUs, and all my product details. Plus, we'll walk through how to adapt them for your own business. Don't miss this chance to streamline your operations and set yourself up for success. Head over to printondemandcast.com slash foundations to sign up now. Welcome back to the Print On Demand cast. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the silent killer of print on demand businesses. Let's get into it. Radical. Welcome to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. Each week, join the gnarly Travis and Josiah as they provide insight into the print on demand industry and equip you with the totally tubular tools, advice, and strategies you need to achieve success and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Now on to this week's totally tubular show. Well, hope everyone's doing great. Uh, I'm Travis. If you haven't ever listened to our show, well, why not? And uh, I'm not joined by Josiah this week. He, We couldn't sync up our schedules. Um, I've been super busy. He's been super busy. It just kind of happens that way sometimes. So don't know what to expect with this episode. Um, it's probably going to be a little faster, a little shorter, I guess, rather um, than other episodes, but still got some good stuff to get to as we talk about the silent killer of print on demand business success. It's so ominous, right? Um, so what's been going on uh, in the week? This this last weekend was absolutely crazy. Um, we My band played on Friday at a um so in leadville colorado there's a race uh it, that they do they do a hundred mile bike race and then they do a hundred mile uh foot race and so last week and it's like at ten thousand feet it's like peak to peak kind of thing you know lots of elevation climb and descent and all of that um and so last week we had played on a on a thursday um, during the day while people were coming to get the registration for the bike race. And this week we went on Friday and we played a four hour set right in the middle of the day on Friday as people, again, were coming to get their registration packets for the hundred mile run. And oh my gosh, I just couldn't believe it. It just boggles my mind that someone wants to run a hundred hours and the winner like did it. I think he set a record for that race at just over 15 hours for a hundred miles. That's it's just nuts <laughs> at like 10,000 feet. Like I said, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, that was Fridays. We had to leave at like eight 15 in the morning and got back like at nine. So it was a long, long, long day. They, it paid pretty well. So that was cool. But, um, and then the next day we had another gig up at Blackhawk, Colorado. So we played that night. And then Sunday was my son, Tate, my oldest son, who used to be my production manager. If you're a longtime listener, you know, Tate, he's been on the show. We've interviewed him. It was his birthday. So we went to uh, downtown to a Rockies game, a Colorado Rockies baseball game. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then Afterwards, we kind of, I was so tired. I just kind of crashed. <laughs> um, but then, uh, and this kind of leads into a little bit of what we're going to talk about later on Monday, I had somebody come over and help me figure out some, some things with my calendar. And I'll get back into that later because I, like I say, I think it really dovetails nicely with our topic. Um, so before we get into that, though, I know that everybody loves this particular segment it is time for the weekly dad joke. Time for the weekly dad joke. Okay, well, you guys know how much I like dad jokes. I mean, it's no, you know, it's not a secret, right? Um, both Josiah and I, really. So the other day, um, I was at home just happily writing all these dad jokes on the wall in our living room. Uh, with a with an erasable pencil so you know it wasn't like a sharpie or anything but my wife came in and she angrily i mean just went off and she was like what the hell are you doing i'm like babe babe read the room (laughs) 
And that is our weekly dad joke. I like that one. And it's so apropos because, yeah, I like dad jokes. We tell them every week here on the Print On Demand cast and in our VIP email. If you subscribe, you get an extra dad joke every single week. Um, so don't forget to do that. You can go to printondemandcast.com slash VIP. little shameless self-promotion right there. But uh, I really don't have a point of interest because I think that our topic is you know, uh, it's, it's not that it's going to take a long time, but I think it's, it's good enough to kind of just kind of hold the show up, you know? And uh, so we don't necessarily need one. And then also I didn't want to do one. So <laughs> I guess I should have led with that. Um, so for that, uh, I guess it's just time for the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the main event. All right, so the main event of this episode, the silent killer of print-on-demand business success. So ominous. I should have spooky music in the background, but I don't. Um, Well, way back in episode 177, I talked about something very important. Um, I, at least I feel like it's very important, and I really believe that most print-on-demand company uh, companies or business owners or entrepreneurs, they get this wrong. And what happens is that um, this really kind of leads to either their business just kind of stagnating um, because they're just not growing. And and what happens then is that they lose interest, of course, over time. You know, if you're not seeing success, it's really hard to stay motivated. And so they end up just kind of throwing in the towel a lot of times because they never really saw the results that they were hoping for. Uh, maybe they sold a few things, but it just kind of didn't ever really materialize. And so, and I think that one of the reasons um, that this happens is because of what we talked about on episode 177. So I'm going to revisit that and I'm going to kind of go through some of the, some of this in this episode and then tie it to some things that I was doing Monday and some things that we're going to be doing in September. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the print on demand success pyramid. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this on your screen. It is a pyramid with different colors and things written on it. <laughs> um, obviously, the base of the pyramid is the whitest because, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, um, the most important thing is at the bottom. And as you go up, they're less and less important. And as I said on episode 177, this is specifically talking about sales channels, because if we were doing a brand, um, you know, like a print on demand brand, then obviously advertising and marketing would be in this pyramid, probably, hmm, probably third, maybe fourth, but, uh, you know, from the bottom. So that being said, uh, since most of you probably aren't watching on YouTube, I should go ahead and explain uh, what is the bottom section of the pyramid. And that bottom section is organization. And organization was the focus of our topic last week, episode 209, when I kind of went over a bunch of different spreadsheets that I use to organize my uh, SKUs and all of that stuff. Um, it really is the foundation of your business. And it's not just the spreadsheets. It's not just, you know, having, making sure your SKUs are organized. That's not, uh, it's not limited to that. Organization goes a lot further than that. Um, and as a matter of fact, and this is where I'll kind of tell the story about what was going on Monday. So I, um, if you listen to last week's episode, I announced that I'm going to do a challenge, uh, for our, our listeners. And, um, I think there was a pre-roll, you know, advertisement that, you know, I recorded. So you guys, you know, have heard about that. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about it more at the end, but what that did was kind of set some things in motion because I knew I needed to record this. I needed to record that. I needed to make this link. I needed to make this page. I needed to do this you know, and all of these things. Um, and simultaneously, there's some other things going on behind the scenes with, um, you know, some other potential opportunities and things like that with, uh, 
and I won't really get into that, but the bottom line is I was starting to feel overwhelmed. And what I've noticed is that, and I even talked about this on episode 205, when I talk about my mindset and I talked about um, self-sabotage and I talk about imposter syndrome and I, I kind of just laid it all bare about how I've wanted to do something in the print on demand space, um, you know, teaching people, helping people, consulting people. And while I do some of that, you know, behind the scenes, it's been difficult for me to kind of get over that hump because I'm so consumed with, yes, uh, imposter syndrome and all the things I talked about on 205, but there's also a part that's just like the tyranny of the urgent. And there's always something that, you know, is always taking my attention and it's really easy to get dragged in. I mean, if you looked at my second monitor over here, there are no fewer than 25 tabs open right now. Um, some of you are going, oh my gosh, you're insane. And then some of you are going, that's nothing, Travis. <laughs> I have 50 tabs open or whatever. But my point is, is that things like that can become, can, can distract you. And they definitely do me. So what I did on Monday was I had a friend that I've, that I've known for a really long time and she has a gift of organization and she has a gift specifically in asking good questions, you know? And, and so I had her come over and my goal and what we accomplished was kind of looking at my calendar, looking at my to do's and then grouping those to do's into categories, if you will, and then organizing my calendar to where, yeah, you always got to check email, you know, you always got to do these things, but then as it relates to print on the man cast, when, you know, how much time do you need in a week to work on that, to record the episodes, to, you know, prepare for the challenge, to do all of those other things, create content, you know, all of those things. Um, and let's set blocks of time for you to do that. And you'll have options in those blocks of time. So, you know, if you really need to, you know, get something out, you need to record a new advertisement or something like that. Well, you can do that or, you can answer some emails or, you know, there's a lot of different things. Then of course, with make your mark design, um, you know, there's production time that I have to set aside time for. And then there's just the minutia of the business. You know, um, I, I meet with my virtual assistants every week. There's constantly fires, you know, that need to be put out. So there's admin tasks, emails, and, you know, responding to uh, requests for new products, sales calls, things like that. And then of course there's, um, strategic planning for like, what products are we going to launch? We're, we're going to be launching a bunch of ornaments for Christmas. And so we're talking about that and we're doing things in that vein. So there's always these different projects. So that gets another category. Um, and so my point is I recognized the need, the, I recognized one of the reasons aside from the reasons I talk about in 205, one of the reasons, um, that I wasn't you know, doing this challenge, I wasn't, you know, scaling, I wasn't like putting myself out there in a larger way was because I, I just didn't feel like I had the time. And so what organized organization can do is it can show you that you do actually have the time. It can help you stay more efficient with your time. So I've built in some hard stops and things like that. And so it's, um, it's actually a really good system. Now I haven't implemented it yet, and, uh, and the reason is, is because I've been really building up to this episode and this challenge. And so I, I basically said on Thursday, so that's, you know, tomorrow, um, cause I remember recording this on Wednesday, I will, um, I will take time and I'm going to go into my calendar and I'm going to take it off of the paper that we kind of wrote it on and I'm going to actually insert it. I'm going to, you know, adjust different things, uh, you know, in there. And then I'm going to use to do lists so I can assign tasks to those blocks of categorized time. That's a lot of explanation for what we did on Monday. But my, but what I wanted to explain is just kind of the organization of all of these things is really foundational. It's, it's the only way that I'll be able to accomplish all of the other things that I need to get done in business. So, um, but it also includes those spreadsheets that we were talking about, you know, so um, 
let's see some of my notes here. <clears throat> you can, you can still, and here's the, here's the, the caveat here. You can still build a print on demand business without organization. And I think that's why I titled this the silent killer of print on demand business success. You can start it, you can get going, you can make some sales, you can do okay. But where will that take you? Where will the lack of organization take you? It's not going to take you where you want to go. It's not going to take you to where you can scale efficiently over time because you just don't have the organization to do it. So that's why it's on the bottom. And, and yes, SKUs, uh, design IDs, like we talked about last week, all of those things kind of come into play. Um, so I, I recommend you listen to 20, episode 209, which was last week if you haven't yet. I would watch it on YouTube um, because it's I, I basically screen share some example spreadsheets on that episode. So uh, check that out if you're interested in that. So the next layer or, you know, the next, yeah, I guess layer of the pyramid that goes on top of organization. And it's really kind of just a how they are, uh, the importance of these to your print on demand business. And I feel like, the second layer is design. Okay. And, uh, I just realized that I've been looking at my notes and I've been, uh, this particular print on demand pyramid had been on there for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. And I'd just been talking into the camera and, <laughs> Oh goodness. That's why Josiah needs to be here. You know, um, I just, I, oh, whatever. Anyway, most of you, again, are probably not going to watch this on YouTube. You'll probably hear it, so it didn't really matter. But anyway, um, if you got a bad design, it ain't going to sell, you know? So how do you make a good design? Well, use good fonts, you know, understand negative space, uh, design for specific colors, you know, don't just, you know, have a design and then choose red and blue and brown and sand and white and black and you know and pink and orange your design will look better on a limited number of shirts um and because some shirts just or some designs just look better on brown you know the most popular shirt color is black and uh for a lot of reasons i think it slims you know it's a slimming color so people know that and they buy it because of that but also all of the colors really pop you know so but sometimes you could be you you could decide i'm not going to do it on black i this shirt is going to be just in sand this shirt is going to be just orange you know or just blue baby blue you know you can choose to do that but it's not it's not like uh, uh, willy nilly, you know, you're not just doing it to, to, to do it. You're doing it because the design itself is kind of dictating that. And so th those are some of the things that we're talking about when we talk about design and having a good design. Um, for more information on good design, you can check out our interview with Drew from Kittle. Uh, and that's episode 153. Kittle is an incredible tool. And uh, we do have an affiliate for that if, you've, if you want to check it out. Um, I think you get a free trial or something, but it's printondemandcast.com slash Kittle. And that's K-I-T-T-L. You can always go to printondemandcast.com slash resources to see, you know, all of the, basically all of the things that we recommend or that we use in our own business and that we have affiliate links for. Um, I think most of the things on that page we do have affiliate links for. I think a couple of them we don't. But um, anyway, Kittle is a great resource. And I mean, you could just go there for free and just look at the designs that they have and see how they're using their fonts, see how they're using negative space, get inspired, you know, and, and create something new. You don't have to have Kittle. You can go back to your Canva account or whatever and, and try to recreate something, you know, from, from, from what you saw on Kittle or, you know, any of these other platforms, but really, really good stuff. Um, all right. So the next level of the print on demand uh, success pyramid is on-page SEO. And there's so much to be said about on-page SEO. Um, this is going to include your title. Your title usually carries, in most platforms, it carries the most weight. 
for the algorithm. So Amazon has an algorithm, Walmart has an algorithm, Etsy has an algorithm. Um, you also have your tags or your keywords, depending on which platform you're on. Um, they call them different things and they actually have different weights of uh, different ways that you can put them in there that work better on different platforms. Um, descriptions, uh, obviously that probably carries a little bit less weight than the title and probably a little less weight than the key keywords. Um, but it's still in there. You know, if you have bullet points, Amazon has bullet points, Etsy doesn't have bullet points. Um, that would be another place that you could put keywords that people are going to search. And, you know, the worst possible thing you can do is, you know, if you have a really cool, um, piece of art that you've created and you've got a, you've got a, a name for it. You know, maybe it's, uh, the bridge over the river, you know, and, and it's a pretty picture of a bridge and it's got flowers and it, and it looks really good on a white shirt. It's kind of, or a black shirt or whatever. And it looks really nice. Uh, it looks great on a coffee mug and you name it, uh, the, you know, a, the bridge over the river, you know, the, the, the bridge over the Arkansas river coffee mug. And that's your title. No one is going to search for the bridge over the Arkansas river. Like you're wasting that valuable SEO real estate. You need to name that something that somebody is going to type in to Google, uh, to Etsy or to Amazon. Um, it could be something like uh, beautiful scenery coffee mug or you know or that 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 might be what somebody types that you would be a logical display for that particular buyer because if they uh you know if someone's just looking for the arkansas river or something like that and they they might see your mug they're not going to click it and if they do they're not going to buy it because they're looking for maybe something else on the arkansas river and it has nothing to do with your design and that's probably not the best design or best example, but I think you get the point. Don't name your products what you like. Name them what someone's going to type, okay? Um, On-page SEO is almost as important as the design. And the reason is, is because without on-page on SEO, they're never going to see how great your design is because they're never going to find you. So... <laughs> Um, the only reason I rank design ahead of on-page SEO is because even if you have the greatest title and the greatest keywords and you're found, you know, for the perfect buyer and your design sucks, you ain't going to get the sale. You might get the click. You might even have to pay for the click because you're paying for Etsy marketing or Amazon sponsored ads, <laughs> but you're not going to get the sale because your design stinks. So that's why I rank design ahead of on-page SEO, but they're neck and neck because even if you have the best design in the world, it's kind of a catch 22. If you don't have good on page SEO, they're never going to see the best design in the entire world. So <laughs> it is kind of a catch 22, but, uh, episode 130, I'm just, you know, spouting off episodes, but episode 130, the top two mistakes, I'm sorry, the top two tips to make your listing stand out on Ep Amazon, Etsy, or Shopify and spoiler, Spoiler alert, it's SEO and the next one on the pyramid, mock-ups. You could have a great design, but if your mock-ups are, you know, trash, uh, you're not going to create that emotional connection with your art or with your piece of, uh, with your apparel or with your, you know, product or whatever. Um, and so it's, they're going to be less likely to buy. So mock-ups are pretty important. Obviously, if you have a great mock-up and a crappy design, it doesn't matter. But once you've got them on your listing through on-page SEO, the, the, the thing that's going to sell them is not your great title or your keyword stuffed title. <laughs> it's not your description and the story you told, you know, about your beautiful painting that you made of the bridge over the Arkansas River. Um, <laughs> it's not going to be any of that it's going to be your mock-ups. They want to see what they're buying, you know? And so you have to have good mock-ups in order, once they have clicked onto your listing in order to finalize the sale, it's going to be the mock-ups that make that sale for you. So 
There's so many great, great places to get mock-ups. Uh, you can, again, go to our resource page to find different places. We talk, uh, we have an entire episode of mo on mock-ups, episode 154, but there's Place It, there's uh, Creative Fabrica, there's Creative Market, there's, I mean, Etsy has some really good mock-ups. They also have some really trash mock-ups. Um, I mean, I guess probably all these places does. Kittle has the ability to do mock-ups. Uh, you can create them yourself in Canva or Photoshop. Um, and you, know, you could use smart objects to give them more of a realistic look. I would highly recommend you do that. So it doesn't look fake because again, mock-ups are dang important. They're number, they're the fourth part of our print on demand success pyramid. Um, so yeah, check out episode 154. If you want to learn more about mock-ups or check out our research page for more info about that. Your next, the next most important thing is your print partner. And your print partner is important because you can get, uh, you can sell for less by choosing a, you know, a different print partner. So you can have better margins um, or you can, you could have better quality because this printer prints better than this one. That's why we always tell you to get samples. Um, and some of them, you, you have more options of unique products. You know, there's, everybody sells a coffee mug. Everybody sells a Bella canvas 3001 if they're a print vendor worth their weight in salt they got a bella and they got a 11 ounce white mug and a 15 ounce white mug you know and they, there's probably a bunch of others that you know I, i'm not going to really go into right now but they're kind of the usual suspects and because they're the usual suspects a lot of people are selling them online so does your print vendor have some unique products that you could potentially sell uh, there was one product we were looking at that had, it was a laser engraved product that they also had like colors and you could layer it and it, it created like an ornament that had four, three or four different layers of different, you know, and you had, you had to design it specifically and they had specific templates and all of that. But I'm like, I don't think that's on Printify or Printful, you know, or any of the kind of usual big guys, but, uh, and that's uh, that company is Merchise, by the way. Uh, you can check them out. They're based in Vietnam. They only have some of their products over here in the U.S. But if you're selling on Shopify and you can have you can have a little longer lead time, they might be a good place for you to get some ideas on some products that you could sell that not everybody else is selling. Um, so your print partners are really important. You know, obviously, like I said, check the quality, check the pricing, check the shipping. A lot of times you'll see. You know, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, I can get this for 10 bucks. And then you realize, oh, they're making it up in the shipping. So it's really a wash between these two companies. So now I just have to check quality. Um, so, you know, make sure you factor in your shipping costs into your final price to figure out what your margin is going to be. Um, and yes, you can use more than one print provider. That's the cool thing. You know, it doesn't matter which platform you're on. Um, if you use spreadsheets um, to... Uh, you can select, you can basically have a column that tells you who, who that one's going to, or who that one is connected to, but yes, you can use multiple, um, multiple print vendors. So you, if you really, really like your current print vendor, but you want to go over to merch eyes and figure out how to sell these four layer, five layer, uh, laser engraved ornaments or whatever, um, you can do that. So don't think you can't, don't think you're like locked into one, but uh, the next one, the next kind of uh, level on the pyramid are tools and resources. And again, you know, these, these are important. I've talked about a whole bunch of them. I've talked about, you know, a lot of tools that you can use. And there's also like keyword tools, how to find all those keywords for that SEO stuff. Um, you know, and there's, there's obviously design tools and there's font tools and then there's people, um, you know, that can help you with marketing, you know, and then, um, there's, you know, I'll, there's tools for, to get like all this AI stuff. You know, I'm actually using an AI tool to chop up our print or our, I'm using an AI tool to chop up our podcasts automatically and kind of look at it and, and see which parts are the best parts and then obviously they're not quite there where it's just like 
send it into the world, there's a little bit of editing you have to do and maybe add a title. And then obviously you have to add all the captions and everything, but um, tons and tons of AI tools that can help you with designs, with your, uh, all of your descriptions and your titles and all of those different things. So they're important, but they're not mission critical. Like you can still do this without those things. You, you can't do print on demand without a design. You, you know what I mean? So that's why it's so high up the pyramid. Um, like I mentioned, we have a whole resource page on these tools and we've talked, um, a whole lot about these tools and you know um when you spend money in your business you typically can take that off your taxes too episode 175 we talk about how to lower your tax burden um you know and 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 thinking through those things but obviously if you're not making any money you're just sinking it in there this is not a mission critical thing you know save save your bucks and and really just make them work for you make good decisions you don't have to have every single tool um so that is the print on demand success period pyramid and the the silent killer of print on demand business success is flipping this pyramid upside down and you're so focused on the tools and the resources and you're trying to figure out which print partner to use and you're trying to figure out what software to how you're going to do your mock-ups and how they're going to look and should i brand them should they all look the same should they all be different um you're trying to figure out all this stuff and you're going about it the opposite direction than you actually should be figure out how you're going to do the thing get organized figure out how you're going to like what, what does your, what does the perfect listing look like? Let's create a template for that. And then let's build off of that. That's a, that's one way to be organized. You know, how are you going to skew all of these products? You know, it's, it's one thing to have 10 products. It's another thing to have a hundred or a thousand or more. Um, and, and what does that look like? How do you take something from idea to design to, a product to a listing. Um, how, what does that process look like? Let's figure all of that out. That's part of the organization. Um, your organization is actually going to inform how you design and what those designs look like. Your organization is going to inform your on page SEO because you're going to figure out when you're going to do that and how, what tools you're going to use, uh, which is the top tier. It, your organization <coughs> is going to influence how you do your mock-ups. What way do you use bulk mock-up and do, you know, a hundred at a time or a thousand at a time? Um, or do you do use place it and you do one at a time, but, uh, it's all automated or do you really know Photoshop? And, and so you can create a tutorial for, you know, potentially a VA to follow and put it here and do this. And here's the smart object and click it here. And, or, you know, are you just doing everything in Canva and you've built out templates to, uh, you know, that are kind of saved in your Canva account. And every single time you do it the same way, there's a lot of different ways, but you're, but it all comes back to how you're organized, your, your standard operating procedures, how you think about all of the rest of the stuff. And you might have already done all of this stuff. What I'm saying is take a minute, step back and figure out, uh, like document that stuff that you're doing already and then figure out how could I improve these things? How could I make these flow together better as opposed to just, oh, there's a fire. I got to go put it out. Um, that's That's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. And that's not... Uh, a good business strategy <laughs> to grow your business. Um, so this kind of, obviously this leads right into what I talked about, what I announced on the show last week and talked about earlier in this episode. And that is the POD foundations challenge, the pod foundations challenge. That's I said, I was going to come up with a name and that's the name I came up with. So I have decided to, uh, 
put this out there into the world. We're going to, this is the first time I'm announcing it. Um, aside from the intro <laughs> advert that you already heard, but, uh, the dates are going to be September 17th through 19th. So it's going to be a three day event. We're going to be on, uh, on a call at 7 PM Eastern. So that's 4 PM Pacific, 5 PM mountain, 6 PM central, 7 PM Eastern. I had some people ask to do it after hours because, uh, Several people, you know, have day jobs and they want to be able to attend. However, I will say, even if you can't attend, if you're going to be out of town or, you know, you have you you just can't make it. You, maybe you're in uh, maybe you're in California and four o'clock, you're not off work yet, whatever. Um, first of all, I'm sorry uh, that we're doing it at seven. I didn't want to make it too late for East Coast and I didn't want to. I wanted to keep it around five o'clock for me, too. So because I'm in mountain. Um <laughs> So there's a little bit of selfishness there, but my point was if you can't make it to one or more or all, don't worry about it. I'm going to record every single one. You'll be able to go back. You'll be able to listen to it um, later and hear all of the information. And one of the benefits of coming to this is that you are going to receive the spreadsheets that I just, I showed, I did my screen share from last week. Um, there were three of them that I showed. Uh, I also talked about Wasabi. I'm actually going to jump into my Wasabi account and sh give you examples, show you um, how I've organized that and how it plays into the spreadsheets and how all of that, um, how the SKUs and how the how the designs designs become design or the ideas for the designs become design ideas, design IDs. And then those designs go on products and how we skew those products um, for uh, and then what we do with all of the rest of the information and how we collect it all on this master listing spreadsheet. Um, and so all of those spreadsheets can talk to each other. And, and while this may not be specifically the way you're going to run your business, because maybe you don't need a certain column or whatever, we we're going to talk about how to kind of massage these for your specific business. So um, you'll get an opportunity. We're going to do some Q and a, uh, but we're going to do some, you know, some detailed walkthroughs of those spreadsheets. You'll get them. You'll get a, basically a Google link that you can then copy into your account. Then you can edit to your heart's content. Uh, so lots of screen shares, lots of Q and a, um, and then uh, even some, real-time assistance making this work for your business so if you're interested you want to do this if you're like i hate spreadsheets but i see <laughs> that i need organization and um it doesn't just stop at spreadsheets there's gonna be a lot of other things that we talk about specifically about organization but if you're interested in this you want to do this i want you to go to printondemandcast.com slash foundations. Okay. It's the POD foundations challenge because I really do believe it's the bottom of the pyramid, this whole idea of organization. So go to print on demandcast.com slash foundations. Um, it's actually a Calendly link. It only gives you the option to choose one day and time. Again, even if you can't make it, go ahead and sign up. It'll ask you a few questions. And then once you're, once you've entered in all your information, You'll be on the email list that will then get updated uh, information about the challenge. That's where I'll send the actual spreadsheet uh, spreadsheets and, or the links to those. And then you'll also receive the links to the Wednesday and the Thursday. So that's a Wednesday, thir or, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the 17th, 18th, and 19th, 7 p.m. Eastern, the Pod Foundations Challenge, printondemandcast.com slash foundations. All right. <sighs> That's all. That's all I got, guys. I mean, uh, Josiah isn't here and I still talk for 40 minutes. Go figure. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get some of you guys uh, talking in that print on demand foundations challenge. It was really cool because I, I got a lot of people that are already like on my uh, interest list. Okay. And I'm going to email them all and say, Hey, uh, go to this thing in case they didn't hear this or whatever. But, um, a lot of, I had a lot of people reach out through the, through, uh, through email, um, 
some DMs on Instagram, some DMs on Facebook. Yeah, uh, this really kind of hit a chord. I struck a chord. So I'm excited. I'm really excited to get with you guys and talk about all this stuff. But um, I don't really have anything else. I'm, I just wanted to uh, share a little bit about the challenge and then share about the print on demand success pyramid and why I think without that bottom foundation, it's kind of the silent killer of print on demand businesses. So uh, let's see here. With that said, I, I, uh, you know, I feel like I want to tell you what's coming here in a second, but I'm not going to, you'll just have to keep listening. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be it. We're right. Just over 40 minutes. Uh, really appreciate you guys listening. Sign up for the VIP email list, printondemandcast.com slash VIP. I know I'm not supposed to have so many calls to action. I talked about like 70 different podcasts in this episode and told you to go to this link and that link and this place and that place. Um, but so I'm just going to end it. Uh, appreciate y'all. And for Josiah, I'm Travis. And until next time, we'll see ya. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute. Before you go hitting that pause button and jumping into the next podcast, let me tell you about the free Pod Foundations Challenge happening September 17th to 19th. We're flipping the script on how you organize your print-on-demand business, giving you the same organizational spreadsheets I use to keep track of all my designs, my SKUs, and everything else I need to create a listing on any channel. Can't make it to the first session? No worries. Go ahead and sign up and catch the recordings later. Go to printondemandcast.com slash foundations today and get in on this game-changing event. All right, now let's cue that outro music. Hey, babe, thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print On Demand Cast. We hope you enjoyed the Totally Tubular Show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure. Hey there, pod pals. Are you a print on demand creator looking to stay ahead of the curve? You want to know exactly when to launch your designs for every key season and event? How about a chuckle with an extra dad joke to brighten your day? If you said yes to any of these, then it's time to join the print on demand cast VIP list. As a VIP, you'll get our free annual design calendar, an amazing guide to help you time your creations perfectly throughout the year. And of course, we'll include a bonus dad joke each week as well. Signing up couldn't be easier. Just visit printondemandcast.com slash VIP and enter your email. Don't let another day of potential pass you by. Become a part of the VIP list, grab your annual design calendar, and let's dive into a year of inspired creating together. We'll see you on the other side.